welcome to Coffee with Colleen. My name is Colleen Hammond, and we are having a guest on today talking about your strengths. Now, you know that I am super uber duper into uh, developing and knowing your temperaments, but this is different than temperaments. This goes in deeper to deeper into your temperament, if you will, and finding out what your natural God-given strengths are. And when you're working within your strengths, you you actually, you know, you're kind of like in the zone. You're in that the zone of where you're the most comfortable and you're the most effective. But then it's kind of like Swiss cheese. There's parts of you that are like not as strong. So how to find those people to complement those areas. And that was, that's what Rhonda uh, is all about. Uh, now, Rhonda is the founder of a coaching and consulting company and they use the Clifton Strength Strategies and that's how people do, you know, they can find out what their strengths are and break through with that. Um, and she works with mostly corporations, but not mostly corporations, she works with corporations um, and you'll see that on her website. Um, but she also has, um, oh, wait a minute, sorry, I got somebody just texted me, the music was still running, I apologize for that. But she also has uh, other areas that she works in with individuals. So. Uh, she goes through workshops and she does corporate education, group coaching, all that kind of stuff. But she's been doing this for almost 10 years. So she's also an author. She's the author of Dive Into Strengths, An Exploration Into the Very Best You. Uh, she co-authored a best-selling book, Driven Success, Failures to Avoid and Wins to Go After. She can be heard on the Oklahoma Talking Company podcast and is a host of Activate Your Strengths show, uh, which I think is once a week. But um, she can tell you more about that. So Anyway, I want to welcome our very pleasant and wonderful guest, Rhonda Boyle. So Rhonda, let's speak and so we can make sure that everybody can hear you. Hey, 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 everybody. Good to be here, Colleen. All right. So can everybody hear her? And is the, is the, this time to, here we have the audio balanced. That's the fine, that's the fine point. So, hey, good morning, Yoon. She's in here and Vicki and Bradley. Coaching is an exciting subject. All right. So let me know if you can actually hear Rhonda. And that uh, they, because I have it all set up and Vicki helped us set it all up. So I wanted to make sure that the, uh, let me love to narrow my strengths, says Judy, and concentrate on a couple of them. The sound is good. All right. Fantastic. So, hey, Rhonda. Hey, you... Colleen. <laughs> all right. Good. You can hear. Oh, so everybody says they can hear you. So, all right. You're better at describing this than I am because I'm super into temperaments. But when you and I were first talking about all this, I don't know, a week or two ago, you, you explained the difference and, and you did it so much better than I. So what is the difference between finding your strengths and the temperaments? Well, actually, Colleen, I love the temperaments. In fact, I got involved in this kind of work through the temperaments. I bet you'll never guess which one I am dominant in. <laughs> Hello, Sanguine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You see the pink going on here, the gotcha. tattoo going on here, the color, the bling. Yes, exactly. Sanguine. And so uh, what happened for me or how I learned about the Strengths Finder or the Clifton Strengths work was through my parish, my church. We brought it in as a stewardship committee uh, or a stewardship program. My husband actually came home from a stewardship committee meeting and he said, you uh, are a What woo. happened for and me I or how I learned mind, about I no the idea what he was talking about Clifton and he told me about this assessment was and so through and took it. And sure enough, I was. So what the Clifton Strengths Assessment does is it actually uh, breaks down the talent within the temperament if that makes sense. So as a sanguine, I have certain talents that show up and someone else can be sanguine also and have a completely different way of operating. So what the Clifton Strengths Assessment does is it helps us identify how, how we do business, how we do life, how we do relationships. And it gives us a language in which to communicate and identify and get our needs met and help us meet other people's needs. So it's pretty exciting work. It's been around for a long time, over 50 years. It was released to the public in 2007 and I got involved in 2008. Yeah. And I think 2007, oh, I didn't realize, cause I know it's been around for oodles and oodles and years and years. So Tom mm -hmm. Rath is probably the one that he's kind of re, did he do the online testing and that type of thing? Well, actually, Tom Rath wrote the book Strengths Finder 2.0, which is how they released it 
to the public. And let's see, he, oh, guess what about that book? It is the number one all-time bestseller on Amazon.com. No kidding. No kidding. Yep. So well, anyway, I put, I put I put a link to it, um, and what people need to know is what Rhonda told me as well because I had this book sitting around. So what what happens is this: you have this book, and I'm holding it up. So Rhonda, if you can't, you don't know this, but I'm holding it up anyway. That's okay. Uh, in the back of the book, there's a little doomahickey, and it, it, it'll say this packet contains your unique access code to take the test. So then you open that up, and then there's your little access code on the inside of there. So the book is $16 on Amazon. And I put the link up in the show notes at the top. Uh, but if you do the, if you go to the take the test, the test is $20. So you can save four bucks on the test. <laughs> you can, <laughs> if you take, if you take the assessment though, from the Gallup Strength Center, you also get the book. They put an ebook in your uh, car, in your dashboard. Oh, that's see. So either way you're going to get the book. Mm -hmm. So that's a good deal. Yeah. That's a good deal. So there is actually, all right, so when, when I took the test, finally, a couple of weeks ago, um, or a week ago, whenever it was I took it, when I took the test, you can get the choice of getting your top five strengths or all 34. So, I mean, it's mind-boggling when you think about there's four temperaments, but really there's 16, and then you can be a various combinations, blah, 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 blah. So, like, when I heard 34... You know, my little OCD went, oh dear. So <laughs> it's so too what, many. It's too many. Right. So what's I mean, because that's like that's like pretty unique. If mm -hmm. you, like my top five are not going to be your top five or not no. going to be anybody's top five, really. That's right. And then how all those thirty four? I mean, my son's a mechanical engineer, and so he said, oh well, that's like something to the power of thirty four. So, oh, oh my gosh. So, um, what are the odds of somebody being similar or the same as you? Well, what a great question. So statistically speaking, the odds of someone having the same top five as you is one in over 278,000. And the chances of somebody having the same top five in the same order as you is, in, is one in 33 million. Wow. So that's just the top five. That doesn't even take into effect the other 29. Mm -mm. No, the chances of somebody having the same 34 as you is something like 256 comma with 29 zeros behind yes. it. It's statistically impossible. That's the number my, my son figured out. Right, <laughs> exactly. Like 10 to the power of something. Yeah, yeah the, the power of 35 or whatever. Yeah, but whatever. It, yeah, it's really statistically impossible for someone to be just like you. And isn't that amazing when you think about how we are made, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that we are unique. Every one of us is unique. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and it would, I think we're all unique in the eyes of God anyway. Right. So you just take that and, and then over time, mm -hmm. of all the people that have ever existed, I mean, you just, you just can't, you can't do the math. I know. I know. It's so, crazy. We talked earlier and I, I said, yeah, let's go ahead and just talk about my top five. So I think it's good to use as an example, like if, you know, your top five, because I know you have it on a coffee mug. I do right here, my coffee mug. <laughs> so she's not shy about it. Uh -uh. All right. So let's talk. And I have mine on my app because I have it on the app. Okay. So my top five, I'm just going to, so, so you have this little app right here. So my top five are competition, activator, communication, learner, and input. Amazing talents, Colleen. So Just what, amazing. <laughs> well, and you're like, what are they? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, but what does that mean? So. Well, let me start off by telling you that you are your 34. And people, Gallup has this way. It's, it's getting you in the door so you can start exploring. So they offer you your top five for under 20 bucks. And really that's a good place to start is with your top five, just learning about them, investigating them, figuring out how they work and where they show up for you in your life. And then moving forward in developing those talents because they are your most dominant. So we are tempted when we open up our 34 to look down at the bottom and go, oh my gosh, so that we can start fixing ourselves because we've con been conditioned through 
you know, our lives to compare ourselves to others and to, to be well-rounded and to fix ourselves in areas of weakness. So the uh, strengths movement, which I love and have been a part of almost 10 years, it really turns that and, and shifts that paradigm on its head so that instead of focusing on what you don't do well and trying to help you get better at it, we focus on what you already do well so that we can, you can get better, stronger, more effective in those areas because those are the areas where you are naturally gifted. It's your automatic go-to. So your number one talent is competition. Who would think that competition is a talent? But it's <laughs> Right? I mean, when you see that, you're like, what? What does that mean, competition? Well, listen, people high in competition want to win. And they have amazing energy that pulls other people when they start to race for something. Right? And so that makes it a very, very influential talent. You know why? Because everybody wants to follow a winner. Ah. Uh true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's been one of the things that's been difficult for me because, you know, my mom said this, and I had told you this earlier around a bit. Um, my mom said that even when I was a little girl, I was always like, I would find the best person, not just in my class, but like maybe a couple of years ahead of me. And I would pit myself against that person. And, you know, um, even and when I was little, I mean, I was raised in a very you know, ethical home, uh, but I would play solitaire on the floor and you know, nobody wins solitaire, right? So, but I'd be playing solitaire and I'd get to that point where you run out of cards and nothing's working and I would like, I would like, oh, time to cheat. And I, <laughs> I remember vividly, my dad was like, you know, oh my gosh, you cheat at solitaire, but I didn't cheat at anything else. Right. But you and I were talking about it earlier. It's like when you're so high in competition, you have to be careful with your children if you see that in your children, because they will be tempted to cheat just in order to win if this is something that they're really high in. Is that, did I get that right? Well, let's, let's say that when you're born, you're born with these talents. Okay. This is, this is part of your DNA. And so when you're born with these talents, you then, as you grow and mature, you develop them into strength. Right. And so as a young person with competition, as a young person with any of your talents, they're not going to be well developed yet. Right. And so the what I call it the outhouse when you each of these talents are a, your greatest source of potential strength. And guess what else? Your greatest source of potential weakness. And when you're not living, when you're living in competition, for example, and it's you're, it's coming out as a weakness, that's when somebody would cheat. Right. Okay. And you mm -hmm. can imagine little kids you know, at, at a young age, not having the maturity yet and wanting to win, you know, so desperately that they take those actions. And it's just a maturing. I have a daughter who has competition really high. And when she was five years old, we were in the middle of the floor playing hi ho cheerio and it came her turn and she was losing. And she, this is the first sign I remember of her in competition with competition. And it came her turn. She was losing. And all of a sudden she went, pop and popped that hi-ho cherry cherries went everywhere and she went storming out of the room furious because she was losing and so that's a sign of immature talent i'm happy to tell you that she has matured now <laughs> it, it, at 24 years old and she is excellent in sales uh, at the salon that she is a, a hairstylist at and so she's always upselling clients that becomes like her little competitive way of winning is that she's woven that into her work. And that's what people high in competition have the ability to do. Well, and it's interesting because when you and I were talking um, that it's important when you are high in competition to have somebody that you are pitting yourself either as inspiration or pitting yourself against, maybe not totally in the world, but somebody that you are striving to compete with yes. whether internally or externally. So, well, that's, we're, we're, that's we're talking a lot about, right. com, but yeah, we're talking a lot about competition, but in general, once you know what your strengths are, then you say, it, it's kind of like when somebody goes to, you know, into counseling or whatever, everything, you, you can't solve a problem until you know what the problem is. That's so right. to me, that's kind of how I see the strengths. It's like, once you know what your strengths are, you go, oh, that's why I do that. 
Exactly. It can be either a, a stumbling block or something that you can use towards your advantage. Exactly. And okay. so when you're in the middle of a competition, let's say you're, you know, running up against a uh, I don't know. I can't even think where it would apply to you. But if you're in the middle of something and you're trying to win, you're racing, racing, and it appears that you, you know, might be tough, you're going to start getting feelings that are, you know, showing that, you know, that could be showing you heading into weakness. And so that's right. how you get the opportunity to manage it. You get to go, wow, look at that. And, and start to, it, it's just a place for you to take a look so that you can grow and develop right. into using that talent more appropriately as a true strength. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Victoria says, can competition and comparing go hand in hand? Absolutely. In fact, competition is a measurement oriented talent. So you, Colleen, automatically start measuring and comparing because you want to see where you are in there. Right. And it's and it, and it gives you the energy and the juice to move forward. Yeah, and when we, okay, so let me, this this goes into another, so I keep talking, I'll just use myself as an example, I could care less, but um, I could good. care less actually, um, because I know when I find my weaknesses and, and it can help other people. Um, so now I have this book, right? Right. So once I take the test, can I just go through the book and go, okay, so there's competition, um, which is not, the book is really good because it gives you um, like um, ideas for action, you know, so it says ideas for action and then working with others who are, comp you know, competitive and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So can I use the book kind of as a coach or do you need coaching or does it like, oh, I know my top five, I got the book, I'm fine. Well, I'll tell you that a lot of people do that. They just take the test and it's like a nice little exercise, you know, wow, so I have competition or I have whatever it is, right? And so it's tempting to just use the book and then learn more, right? And think that you're there. But here's the thing, Donald Clifton, who actually created the assessment back, he passed away in 2003. He once said that talent development can only happen in the context of another human being. And so what he's talking about there is being able to look at yourself in the context of the relationships that you're in. So can you learn a lot about yourself? Yes, but in order to go out there and test your competition and then grow and develop your competition, you really need another human being. So whether you find that other human being out and about wherever you are, you know, sometimes people use it in their families and they have conversations, teams at work, they have round table discussions, they start to uh, map out who's gonna take what job in order to get the project off the ground or whatever. yourself and put out practical steps for personal and professional development. So really what a coach does and additional training in this area is going to actually like ramp up and power you up a lot faster. Right, right. Yeah, we're getting a lot of questions like Kathy says, is bossiness in there as a talent because I yes. had that in spades. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have bossy, if you mm -hmm. have been considered bossy your whole life, or, you know, people have said that about you and you've had that reputation as a little girl even, then it is possible that you have the talent theme of command or you might have the talent of maximizer. So we don't know until we take a look at your profile. So let's go through the 34. Okay. Um, what, what, I mean, just really briefly. Well, we really don't I have do... time to go through all 34 because no. there's so many. Yeah, because well, there's how about 34. if we continue on with your next one? Oh, okay. I suppose we could. <laughs> <laughs> well, we share it. You and I both have this one. That's right. This is Activator. It is Activator. So people high in Activator, we are on the move. We are movers and shakers. And we have an energy about us. I don't know if the audience, you can, we can ask them if they can tell this common little energy that we have. And that's Activator. People high in Activator are catalysts for change because we have no problem diving off the cliff and then building our wings on the way down. It's just how we are. We see it. We don't plan on it. We just jump. And we might be a little messy in the process. <laughs> you know? Like you can see where we've been. 
we might leave a trail behind us, right? <laughs> you know, because we're, we, like I said, we don't plan. We just see it and we're like, yes, bam. And we're on it. And so that's really a fun talent to have uh, in our top five. And it does, okay. it gives us this energy. People sense this energy about us, which has to be released somehow. So that's why we're always on the move, moving and shaking. Right. Okay, we lost your video. Okay. Um, you froze and then we lost your video, but I, I can still hear you. I think I'm gonna come back here in a second. Okay. Let's I'm not sure sing. if it's, um, that's okay. It well, could be your internet speed or something. I don't know. Maybe. What would you have me do? Here, hold on a second. Let me. Oh, let me try to. Unless you want me to dial in again way. or something. Nope. I I fixed it. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened, but you disappeared. Okay. All right. Let me list. Oh, I'm gonna line you back up here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. That, I'm glad. You know, I'm glad your audio never left. So that's the important thing. We got okay, to hear good. all the good stuff. So. Good. Uh, Dorothy said, scratch that. Can't hear anything now. Um, How about now? Just, Am I, I make good? sure everybody can. Uh, and somebody asked about the book, the Strength Finders book. The, it's the name Strength Finders. And here, I'll it's put it back in the comments. It's Strength Finder 2.0. We're going to find we go. your strengths. Yeah, there's the link. I'll put it in the link in the comments. And links are also in the top in the show notes. Um, Perfect. Oh, so. Vicki says I'm back. Yay. Thank you, Vicki. All right, so so competition and then activator. So there's a lot of energy to that. My number three is communication. And we share this too. <gasps> we both have the gift of gab. <laughs> Can you imagine? But you know what? People high in, comp uh, in communication, we do love to talk, but we love turns of phrases and memes and finding the perfect way to share information. And we're good at presenting. We're good at social media. We're good on platforms like this, you know, where we can go live. We love communicating and sharing stories. We are magical storytellers that embellish everything. I have this phrase that says, never let the truth get between me and a good story. <laughs> you know, we're not above a little exaggeration because we like to make things fun and interesting and captivate people through our stories. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. And I haven't even kissed the, I haven't kissed the Blarney Stone yet. And that's what people are like, oh no. <laughs> Wait until she kisses the Blarney Stone, then we're all in trouble. Um, so go. that's communication. Then mm -hmm. my number four is learner. Yeah, you have. And I'll tell you, Joanne O'Neill has your next two. You share those with her, Joanne. So I'm interested in uh, hearing your input here. So your number four talent is a talent called learner. And people high in learner love the process of learning. They just get captivated by randomly by whatever captures their eye. And, you know, they, they late at night, they might click that link on the Internet and fall down the rabbit hole and come up three hours later looking a little dazed because <laughs> they've been learning and they have no idea how much time has passed. They look at their watch and they're like, what? Three hours? But that's what learners do. And they need two to three hours a day of time to set aside for themselves just to learn stuff that captivates their interest. Now, your number five talent, we often see learner and input together, but not always. I have input uh, and you have learner and input and I don't. So that's, that's just a slight difference from us. Your input likes to study very narrowly and it likes to collect information and sort it and hold it as a resource. And you know what? You do that with your shows. You broadcast them live and then you take them and you archive them and you share them as a resource later. Isn't that one of the things that you do? Yeah, absolutely. So that's your input yeah. in action as opposed to learner, which is really more of, an, of a uh, random learning. Both mm -hmm. of those talents need two to three hours, probably a day of good learning time. Joanne O'Neill is a master at uh, health and, and wellness and food education, organics and those types of things. And that's her input at play. Right. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because you see that, that, you know, I've got the, the competition. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to pit myself against the best person out there who's doing a live show. And then my activator makes it happen. And then I communicate because that's what this is all about. And then I'm a learner. So I learn all of these things. And then 
I share it in. What's the input again? Input is learning <laughs> narrowly. It's narrowly it's learning and being a Focused. resource. Okay. Mm -hmm. Folk, very focused learning. That's right. And so right. what I see, if I'm looking just at your top five, which we don't do in coaching, we look at all right. 34. But right. if I'm looking just at your top five, I'm going to suggest that you learn and gather input so that you can win and communicate and keep things moving. Right. You bring the, the resources uh, to your people with, with your communication and your activator talents. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, that's I have, it. I have a stack of books because um, I'm going to give everybody the, a tour of the facility, I think on Friday for Friday's show. It's actually not going to be a show. It's just going to be a tour. But three tenths of a mile from my office is the library. And they're like, oh, so nice to see you back, Colleen. You know, it's like, yeah, because I went there all the time with my children. I have a stack of books. Five, I do five books a week. I have a stack of books over there and that's my challenge is I read and I learn so much and I want to share so much that I kind of skip from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing, you know, so mm -hmm. I have to be very focused. And a lot of this is nature nurture too. It is. Um, because we'll, we'll talk about now next, aren't you supposed to do the bottom five? Right. Uh, we can, you'll have to tell me what those are. I don't have them written down. Oh, that's fine. Um, Cause they're very embarrassing. So they are not. <laughs> Talents are neutral. There's no right or wrong. No talent is better. I know your competition may not believe this, but no talent is better than another. That's right. Well, I tend to disagree, but okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> but you would, wouldn't you? That's right. <laughs> we'll talk about it because that's my competitor, or that's my communicator. Sure. That's right. That's right. Excuse me. Wow, that was a horrible cough. Mm. All right. So I know that like on the website, it said, okay, you keep going down, going down, going down until, you know, you read the explanation for each one until you run into, I think it's like two in a row that don't match. Right. Um, there was kind of one in there that I said now, and then I talked to my husband about it and he went, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so I actually got down to 20, 21 before and then 22 and 23 and went mm, no mm. so i actually all but got all the way down to 21 where i could say oh yeah absolutely that is forefront in here in my actions and my activities and my thinking and and how i respond to things um so really from 22 down to what is it 29 i went mm. all Not right so, so now we we look at the the bottom five so i mean i'm like totally vulnerable and all out here but we're here not going to look at them for long Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, I really, I have to tell my people that. I'm like, no, we're going to look at them just for the sake of knowing what they are, because that's where you're going to find your strategic partners. That's probably where your dearly beloved is. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we are, that's where you're going to look for the people who uh, can come along beside you and help you. It's sort of like, um, in a, in a work situation, you would be hiring to your weakness. Right. So and, it's and, the same thing. And number 30 is some, it's funny because I have, I looked at these and I, the only the one that stuck out for me, I went, oh, and we'll talk about that one. But, um, because you and I have already spoken about it, mm -hmm. but, and it's funny because I just said this, my number 30 is consistency. And I just said that because I'm such a learner, I learn and I learn and I learn, I jump. I'm like skipping, uh, uh, you know, like remember how I used to skip stones on the lake? I skip from thing to thing to thing so I don't complete. I have a problem completing things, which is why I've had to hire help. Well, you're an amazing starter. Yeah. This is where you, this is where as a coach, I'm going to focus your, I don't want you thinking about that negatively about yourself. That okay. I don't finish anything. I never can complete anything. I mean, look how negative that is. Yes. Instead, I want to, I want you to focus on what a great starter you are with your activator. Okay. Cause that's what you are. You're an amazing right. get her done, get her going kind of get person. Uh -huh. But when it comes to some of the details, that's where you need your help. Right. right. So right. what's your number 30? 30 is consistency. Well, hello. It's my number 34. So just so you know. <laughs> So That's hilarious. I beat you on me. that one, too. You did. Look at you winning. <laughs> hilarious. Competition. Isn't that funny? Okay. But listen, notice, right. notice the reaction of your competition. You noticed. You measured. <laughs> I do. You I can't do. I don't judge. No, I don't you're not judging. Judge. This I'm, isn't about I'm judging. I'm assessing and measuring. Yeah. You, but and it's you me. I'm judging me. It. Yeah. It's more like mm -hmm. I'm judging me against somebody else, and I go, oh, they're better than me. 
and I, I normally don't, I, I'll see it. But right. because I know you're sanguine and, and we can tease each other, yes, I know I can, can say that. I'm like, I beat you. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing that shows up for you all day, every day. That's why it's your right. number one. Yes. Right? So and, your number yeah. 21 is no, even if you see the presence of 21 in your life, right? it does not have the dominance and the power as your number one. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right. So number 30 was consistency. Number 31. And this is the one where we talked about because I, I and we'll talk about it again. <laughs> this is empathy. Yes. I'm very low on empathy. Ain't nobody got time for that. And so, <laughs> so, but what's interesting is I think because of my spiritual life and my prayer and meditation and growing spiritually, I can now enter into a room and I can feel if there's 200 people in the room and somebody is crying or is very, very sad, I can mm -hmm. feel it and I will get tears in my eyes. So I, I'm an empath in that way and it's very exhausting. Yes. Um, so, but I developed that. I only found out that I had this skill because I think I developed it a few years ago. So I think that's more of a spiritual thing that, so which Could brings me well to be. the point, nature, nurture. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at these strengths, and so this is my empathy is 31. And, and literally, if, you know, I have a hard time with my children too, when it's like, okay, don't wallow. Let's deal with this emotion. Come here, cry, sweetheart. You know, and I know all, and, and I feel <laughs> and that you're way. you're doing this. In the meantime, <laughs> don't be getting your snot on me. No. <laughs> But in the meantime, I'm like, at some point, okay, we have to draw the line now. We're going to stop wallowing. We're going to stop crying about this. What can we do? What steps can we take? Mm -hmm. So I can see where I have developed empathy, but at some point I'm like, I check out. You could, you could have, just because you have empathy lower, it's a lesser mm -hmm. talent. It doesn't mean you don't have right. any empathy. It really means that you <laughs> do you. not necessarily at all times physically feel what's going on in the bodies of other right. people that's what people with empathy really have they have okay. they're they're hypersensitive to the energies of other people so in other words they walk in the room and they can go whoo there's a black cloud over there because they can feel anger or depression or and they can also feel excitement and and so forth right they can physically they physically feel in their own bodies i had one client one time with uh she has empathy high and we were on a coaching call and she said i don't even know how to manage this she said my husband came home from work the other day and he broke his big toe and my big toe started hurting wow right so so being empathetic that some oh i'm so sorry you broke your toe let's get you to the emergency room someone super high and super in touch with in this case her significant other her beloved uh she physically felt what he felt in his body he will come home from work with a headache and she gets a she has a headache by the time you know dinner's over because she's picking up on the energy that he has so empathy <laughs> l empathy being l yeah you don't have any of that right no. Colleen's like, oh my God, that poor <clears throat> woman. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm back to ain't nobody got time for that, right? <laughs> but you know what? Think about it. This is a Ooh. very needed gift oh, in gosh, our yes. world today because right. people high in empathy are amazing relationship builders and nurturers. They, you don't have to even say a word and they will go over to the person that they see that's struggling and put their arm around them and love on them for a minute. They can look them in the eye and there's a connection there. Like, I see, I know, you don't have to say anything. And they go over there and wrap their arms around them and they just are there. They mm -hmm. just be. Whereas you can hear in the story you said with your kids, right? Your activator is like, chop, chop, that's done, we're done. What do we need to do to move forward? Yep. Right. See, you're ready to move forward with your activator where someone with empathy is ready to sit and chill and hang out. And this is where they get in trouble sometimes and their employers get frustrated because they took too long on the call because they were, you know, they could feel the feelings of that woman and the distress that she was in because the airline tickets didn't show up and she's got to get to the funeral and she, and they're feeling it and they're taking extra time and then they're getting in trouble for it. 
right? Ah, right. So you see how things can happen if we don't understand how people are naturally gifted. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. So number okay, 31, good. That was no empathy 31. there. Sorry. No empathy. I know, because you and I were on the phone and you started laughing because we were talking about your stuff and you were like, yeah, mm -hmm. your lone empathy. Well, you, <laughs> you did what most people do when they look at the bottom part of their report. But again, it's conditioning. Yeah. Let me look exactly. at the bottom and see how I can fix it. And you're like, I yeah. have empathy. I'm empathetic. <laughs> okay, you, but now you I'm really be empathetic. I can be empathetic. It's just not my one of my top strengths. No. All right. So number 32 was context. And we're so, going long, but that's okay. I'm, that, I'm, that we're, we're going long, but this is good. Oh, okay. Great. So people high in context want the backstory, the history, what happened before. So does your husband by any chance love the History Channel? Yes. Yeah. He probably is high in context. So you see mm. he's showing up in your bottom talents. It'll be interesting right. finding out what his are because this always happens. Couples meet one another and they're, oh my gosh, you know, bing, bing, bing. They're so excited. <laughs> They've got, oh, he's just like me. No, he's not. No. <laughs> he has Opposites the same, attract. maybe he has similar <laughs> values. Maybe he has, right. sim you have similar interests, but you do not see the world in the same way. And so what happens is you know, seven years later, he's stepping on your last nerve because he wants to watch the History Channel and you're like, please, can we have a sitcom? You know, so anyway, <laughs> yeah. people high in context, they just love the backstory and the history. Got it. Mm -hmm. And I'm low on that. All right. And number 33 is deliberative. Yeah, this is my husband's number one. <laughs> people high in deliberative see risk and, and danger. And with your activator, you're pretty risky because, right, you're jumping off the cliff and building your wings and so people high and deliberative if we would listen to them or, or they could stop that right because they're like what are you thinking what do you 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 haven't thought that all out they're very big planners who must mitigate okay i just lost her audio and video oh can you still am i back me? oh there I you are you. you're back i hear you got it sorry you're back yeah, so, so deliberative people, they see risk and danger and they will not move forward until they mitigate that. You're already off the cliff. Gone. Yeah. 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 And hopefully he's behind me with like a, a parachute or something because that would make well, him more he comfortable. Might be. Yeah, he might be. I doubt it. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> at this point, after over 30 years together, it's like he knows that I'm, I'm going to, on my way down, I will yes. have constructed the wings probably about a hundred feet before I hit. So, and then and I'll, it's going to be messy and he's used to yeah. clean it up after you, you yeah. know? Yeah. That's the kind of thing. So what's that number 34? And then number 34 is <laughs> adaptability. That's, I find that very interesting. I would not too. What's call it mean? that in you. <laughs> People high in adaptability bend and flex. They roll yeah. with it. They don't get all wigged out when things change. They just, yeah. you know, it's no big deal. When you say, hey, coffee or tea, and they go, it doesn't matter. They really mean it. <laughs> they That's really my it. husband, big time. Mm -hmm. I, and maybe it's because I've learned from him. I was less adaptable, younger. It's like my way or the highway. And mm -hmm. I remember when we were first married, my husband would say, I hate this phrase, but it was like more than one way to skin a cat. He grew up in the country. He said, there's more than one way to skin a cat, Colleen. You know, we can do it this other way. And I'm like, mm, no, I've done it this way my whole life and it works really well. Right. So I think over time, again, that's a skill that I have learned. It's a nature nurture thing. Yes. I think it's been nurtured into me. You're able um, to adapt when you have to. It's yeah. not your favorite thing to do. Not my, I like a schedule and I, I prefer the schedule not to change because mm -hmm. the schedule works. Um, but if things happen, and I think again, it goes back to my spiritual life where I have learned yes. it's like, it is what it is. Let's just fix it. There you go. Because that's my adaptability thing. That's it's like, it. okay, it is what it is. What can we do to make it better? What can we do to fix it? What immediately. Can we do? Look at you. Right. Immediately moving into action. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. All right. Somebody asked a question. It was really okay. good. Let me go back and see if I can find. Kathy says her husband scores very low in empathy. Drives my daughter crazy. <laughs> yeah. My husband ain't got any of that either. <laughs> Liz thinks she's really high in empathy because she walks into a room and can feel a negative person. Absolutely. Uh, Amy, Amy says, I'm bad with empathy too. My response to my children is, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> The, v, there's Vicky, a clue. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Vicky says details. Oh, and she's going to do an acronym. Deliberate extra touches, automatically increasing level of service. Her and her acronyms. Tima says, I wow. have high empathy, I think. I'm, I've... I've described a dark cloud before. Victoria says, oh, here it is. Victoria says, can situations in life change your strengths or enhance your strengths? Well, certainly there could be changes. You could use one or two or five talents more likely at work. And then at home, you're completely different, right? So for example, my husband at work, he's very much an executor. He gets stuff done. He takes care of business. He, he, he's retired now, but he used to run a major operation. And then when he comes home, he goes completely in his head and he becomes a, he reverts to a thinker because he's trying to recharge his batteries. So if you can imagine that uh, your talents are like a ladder, right? You're going to climb up the ladder and you have your hand on one rung and another hand on another rung and you've got your feet on other rungs. You're climbing that ladder up and down all day using a variety of talents, combining them, leaving others at home for the day. Like I, you know, I can't use my communication at church. Huh? My pastor wouldn't appreciate me yapping right? So I have to actually turn it down. And so depending upon the situation, yes, you will bring forth certain talents, but you're, you're probably not going to bring forth any that are actually not strong and dominant for you. You're going to okay. always go to your most dominant talent. So you're always, Colleen, going to look for a way to move forward. You've said it multiple times just on this call. That's yeah. your activator. Absolutely. Uh, in leading with an act in a with activator right and that's probably what you do in every situation is you find yeah. a way quickly to move forward over under around or through exactly yeah it's always yeah I, you know and and that's what i try to and that's when i when i do the show that's what i you know okay let's understand the emotions and your strengths or your your temperaments or your you know whatever and mm -hmm. now What's your next action step? And so that even at the end of the show or sometimes on my Facebook page, what are you going to do today? And now I know that's my activator. It that, is. It's absolutely. You know. So let me go back to Vicki's question just real quick. So mm -hmm. do you need to take the test again? In that, in like, let's say you change jobs. No, right. you do not need to change, take the test again. The chances right. of change of your top five, well, let me rephrase that. You have a 70 6.24% chance of nothing changing in your top five. And so it doesn't matter. You are who you are. It's learning how you work within these talents and which ones you're bringing, you know, to the table for which, which ones are you not using at all? Which ones mm -hmm. do you not have a chance to use and how can you change things in your life so that you can use more? Right? So Colleen, right. for you, it's being able to communicate even more being able mm -hmm. to move even more, being able to find more ways to measure, more ways to learn and bring that information to your people. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and that's one thing that I really um, pride myself on, for lack of a better word, but when people take my courses, uh -huh. there's like, in in the industry, there's an average of 2% two, two of people actually finish a course that they have purchased. And I, I'm just, I'm very happy that the people who actually complete, the, I have a higher percentage of people that complete the course and because that may, I feel so good, not the numbers as much, but that I have had, had an impact on another person. You're you winning. Know, so I'm but winning. you're winning, right? <laughs> you're measuring, yeah. you're checking, you're looking yes. at how, it, how it's working and you, that's how you set your marker to move forward and to win. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but deep down, I think. You know, at once I look at the numbers, I was just, at first I was really upset. Like, wow, oh, I only have a 63% completion rate. That's horrible. 63%? Oh, uh, wow. no. As opposed to industry standard is two. But I didn't know that at the time. I thought, why aren't 100% of people finishing the course and improving whatever it is, whatever course it was or whatever they're, you know, I just wanted people like, why aren't people finishing? And so when I found 2% was the industry standard and I had a 63% average, I'm like, well, that's really good, but look at me. How can I get those other thirty-seven percent of people to finish the course? You know, so how can I make it better? How can I? Right. You know, that's why I'm like, okay, now I can send emails, I can send reminders, I can add this to the course that will improve it for people and, and that type of thing. So there you I don't go. Know what, 
I don't know where that falls. Yoon had a really good question. She said, when you're looking at, let me go back to here, um, masculine energy and feminine energy, would a man and a woman appear different? So like a male activator, would that be different than a female activator? How does that um, play out? Well, it, it has nothing to do with gender. Uh, let me just put it that way. It has to do with the other talents around it. So for example, uh, Colleen and I both have activator and communication in our top five, but she has competition, learner, and input. I have ideation, maximizer, and woo. So the, the, the talents that are around each of our talents dynamically influence each of the other talents. So your competition makes your activator move for the win because that's the way we're going to win, right? right? Where I don't care anything about winning. So mine is more about maximizing potential. I have maximizer number three. And okay. so, and Joanne has that one too. Joanne O'Neill, you have maximizer. Yeah. So anyway, it has to do with what other talents are around it. Now, okay. there is some difference in gender, like more women have empathy high than men. Mm -hmm. So that is just a, a, a subtle difference between men and women, but there are not that many differences. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good, good, good. But what well, a great we went, question. We, yeah, it's a fabulous question. It's funny because I was just studying masculine and feminine energy this morning. <laughs> studying. Yeah. There I am. <laughs> a learner. Hashtag learner. <laughs> Hashtag learner. <laughs> Right. Well, all right. So we're going to wrap things up for today, but I want to make sure that um, you get a chance to go to Rhonda's website. Uh, you can get tips from her at tips.rondaboyle.com. Uh, and that'll take you to this particular page that you're seeing right there. Or you can go to her website, rondaboyle.com, um, and just kind of take a look around there. She's got some things of different companies that she's worked for and their services and uh, that type of thing. So, uh, but I, and then of course the Strength Finders book. Um, I put the Amazon link in there, but make sure that you get to find out those eight ways to become the very best you. Uh, again, it's at tips.rondaboyle.com and all of those links are included in the show notes that are at the, if you're watching this on Facebook, that's at the top of the screen. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably below the screen. So Rhonda, this is so much fun. Isn't it great. I love I this so stuff. Much. Yeah, I do too. And this is just such a nice... Uh, meld for me going from, you know, I've been studying temperaments for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And this is, I talk about this type of thing all the time. And I didn't know that this was something that already existed. So I'm yeah. very excited to like, learn more. Yes. <laughs> well, I and hope you'll count on me as a resource with my input. You betcha I will. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic having you on the show. I'm glad our Thank audio and our so video much. and everything worked out so well. Um, so um, let me see. Now, how am I going to do this here? <laughs> All right. So you're good. I'm All right. Good. I will talk to you soon. If you want to stick around, we'll do an after you and I can just talk. In the I'll green be in the room green a little room. bit later. All right. Thanks, Colleen. Love I you, appreciate sweetie. you. You All too, right. hon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.